Friends, as we're sitting and I'm seeing in our congregation those who are young among us for whom 18 long years is longer than you've been alive, it doesn't take that long to realize how much hurt there is in human life. It doesn't take that long to realize how much Our hearts can ache, our bodies can ache, our minds can ache, our spirits can ache. So already in the youth of our days, we need to be noticed for the things that we need. We need someone to help us with our hurt. And therefore, you who are young, and you who are young at heart, God's children, you are blessed to notice pain, and blessed with love if you can entertain some means to trade what's mean for what's kind, and loosen hurts that people bind to life, till lives renewed by love are all that will remain. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It was a worship service not entirely unlike ours this morning. That community gathering around God's word and the promises of a God whose senses are turned in our direction. There's Jesus teaching a way of life in a world that has so many ways to take it from us. It's the Sabbath. A day of rest, a day where the rest of the week is put aside and hearts and minds are able to focus on things we say are above. It was a worship gathering not entirely unlike our own where Jesus Christ was present and suddenly someone appeared. A woman hurting bent over, unable to look at things above, instead forced to look at the dust of the earth on which we trod. From the way it sounds, from the way she was bent over, I doubt she could even rise as she was able and read the bulletin with those in the synagogue that day. You can almost imagine imagine her sitting there relying on the things she knows by heart, maybe singing along to the words in her mind while everybody else looks at the words on the page. Suddenly there appeared in their midst a little voice turned over, Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in his bosom gather. Nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge e'er was given. And God noticed. Jesus noticed the need. Jesus chose to help where there was hurt. She just came to church to sing her little hymn, be with her sisters and brothers and siblings in God's family. She just came to church like she had for 18 long years, bent over in a life where people could look over her. She came to church with the prayers of her heart, and God chose to notice her need and help her hurt. Come over here. You can almost hear Jesus whispering. He doesn't want to take her dignity. He's not trying to put her on display where she herself didn't stand there asking to be on display. Jesus calls her over, come here. I sense you're hurting, and I want to help. Taste the resurrection. Rise up. 
be here in the place you long to be with God's family set right. And immediately the woman stands up and immediately she's able to see the things that had been kept from her view and immediately her mouth is open and she's praising God and immediately someone in the congregation, probably the preacher, who thinks he's got everything figured out better and knows the Bible forward and backward, says, woman, have you never read? The Bible clearly says that there are six days to do work and one day to do rest. How dare you claim to be a Christian? How dare you claim to be faithful and come in here and disregard the Bible getting healed from your ailments on the Sabbath? Lady, you can't cherry pick scripture. You can't go around wanting healing and wholeness when the Bible says it's not allowed today. And God in Jesus notices the need and decides to help with the hurt. It was a day not entirely unlike today in a congregation not entirely unlike our own. Haven't we been there? Haven't we lived lives where people are hurting in our midst, where people are bent over in the pain of life in our midst? And somebody absolutely certain that they have righteousness on their side cracks the Bible open like a fortune cookie, takes out one verse that says, you need to keep suffering because it's not right for you to taste grace today. Jesus sees how we are trying to be faithful even in the moments when we hurl God's word unfairly and abusively at one another. And so God in Christ Jesus, who noticed the need of the individual and helped the need of the individual, turns that same attention to the body as a whole. You hypocrites! Jesus says to someone like me, you stand there calling this woman a cow who's looking to eat out of a manger of grace she doesn't deserve when you yourself are a donkey who needs to be brought back to the waters of renewal? Don't you know that God gave us life? Don't you know that God gave us the word of life? Don't you know, says Jesus Christ, that I am the incarnation of the word of life so that you can live, so that you can be raised up, so that you can be noticed in your need, so that you can be helped where you hurt, don't you realize that God has been speaking to this creation from the beginning of time so that you can receive mercy and not be denied it? You say that there are six days when this hurting life should have been helped. Then why wasn't she on your list to help? Why is it now the Sabbath and you've still left her broken? You say there are six days when work is to be done. She's waited six years three times over. And her Sabbath restoration is what you hold against her today? But haven't you needed it? Haven't you hurt for it? Haven't you ached for it? Haven't you been bound to sin and pain and death in your own lives? Haven't you carried your struggle that no one else can see? Haven't you kept the secret deep within you that you hoped no one else would figure out? Haven't you been afraid that somebody would take out the Bible and use the voice of your creator as an attack against you? Haven't you been coming here hoping that it's true? That though he giveth or he taketh, God's children would never, ever know the word forsaketh. 
this day is something different. This Sabbath, this rest, this worship, this life with God you are called into, this is something different. We aren't cracking open the Bible like a fortune cookie. We are coming to it as the bread of life that nourishes. We are coming here to be noticed. We are coming here to be helped. And what's more than that, we're coming here to be healed. Don't you need the water? Don't you need the feast? Don't you need to hear God say, I see you and you are set free. Now rise up because this resurrection is yours. God in Jesus Christ has noticed the need of the individual and helped our hurt. God in Jesus Christ has noticed the need of our body in the church and in the family of this world. God in Jesus Christ has chosen to help us where we are hurting so that we might have the grace to turn around and rise up and go spread good news that the real Sabbath rest we are given is the one in which we find the life we have been waiting for. Six days, six years, 12 years, 18 years, however many it takes. For this to be the day of salvation, for this to be the day of the Lord's favor, for this to be a day not entirely unlike that picture of heaven when Jews and Gentiles and men and women where saints and sinners, where old and young, where all of us together are called in and made something new in the Christ who says, I hear you, I see you, I feel you, I feed you, I sense you, I set you free. Now rise up and sing and live. Amen.